All right, guys, this guy got a perpetual perpetual motion device. What is that? This is a perpetual motion device. That's the first time. I no, I did see it for the first few seconds of this video, so that's why I put the, the air quotations there, man. <laughs> I've ever used a green screen in one of my videos, but it's important to put perpetual motion in inverted commas because perpetual why the why motion doesn't exist. Actually, the designer of this device calls it a perpetual motion simulator. I quite like that. Actually, I quite like perpetual motion simulators in general because we know that. I, I wouldn't want this thing in my house anyways, bro. It would be making too much noise, man. OK, maybe if I had like a, you know, just like a cool, like kick it room or something. I, I don't know, guys. Perpetual motion isn't possible, so it's fun to try and figure out like Where's the trick? And in this particular case, the trick is some really lovely engineering. To be clear, I don't like perpetual motion simulators that are designed to scam people. The list of those is endless, but the creator of this device is very clear that it needs batteries. In fact, I did some bookkeeping after buying all the stuff. Uh, so uh, how long have been? There's a whole business for fake perpetual motion devices, guys. I'm gonna let that sink in for this video and I chuckled at these two entries perpetual motion machine followed immediately by batteries for perpetual motion machine to figure out how this works we really need to look inside and thankfully through the magic of buying two of them I already have a taken apart one right here <laughs> and that's the second time I've ever shaken, shaking my head so my guess is they use like something like magnets guys screen screen in one of my videos the idea was <laughs> it's, man, I guess they are really impossible to have, man. Just to remove the... Every, everything requires maintenance. Uh, I, I don't know, guys. Why? Why? Why scam us, man? That ain't no perpetual motion. ...base and replace it with a transparent one, because, you know, I like to make transparent versions of things. The problem was, when we put all the gubbins back in, we couldn't get it working again. So while this is good for showing you what's going on, it's a bit unsatisfying because it doesn't actually work. And well, how do you break it, man? Maybe it is actually perpetual motion until he messed it and I up. I thought, wait a second, why don't I try and contact the person who made this thing? William Lee was very helpful giving advice on how to get this thing working, but we never could. So eventually I asked if he would make one for me. A bit of a YouTuber privilege, man. But then again, this guy makes videos on perpetual motion devices for his for a living. Uh, maybe it isn't. And so here is my third perpetual motion simulator. Isn't it beautiful? I'm hugely grateful to William for making this for me. He took the time to figure out how to work with unfamiliar materials, and the result is fantastic. I just wonder how much he paid for it, guys. Probably a decent, good amount, right? By the way, William is the creator of this design. There have been hundreds of knockoffs since, but if you're planning to get one of these, I really hope that you'll go to the original creator. The link to... Oh my goodness. Oh my Dirt goodness. Etsy page is in the description. So let's... Man, I wish I had some crafts like this, man. I'll be making bank. Let's figure out how this thing works. Well, even without looking inside, we can make some educated guesses. Without the device turned on, you can see the losses due to friction. Gravitational potential energy is turned into kinetic energy, and that kinetic energy is turned back into... It's perpetually needing electricity. ...gravitational potential energy. But look how much less gravitational potential energy there is after that process. So when the device is turned on, the ball must be given some additional kinetic energy at some point. And the only thing I can think of is electromagnets. And in this transparent version, that's what you see here. But that's not enough on its own. If you simply turn on the electromagnet, well, the steel ball will accelerate towards it. But once it reaches the electromagnet... It oh, we guessed it right, guys. Electromagnetic. It'll be harder to leave. This is what happens when I put a permanent magnet in place of the electromagnet. So the electromagnet needs to be on during the approach and then off once the ball reaches the magnet. Hey, bro. Okay, okay. Pretty fancy, I mean, straightforward kind of stuff that's going on here. That's where this component comes in. This is an inductive proximity sensor. He's getting super technical, man. I can't, I can't keep up, man. I can't. Actually, no, this is an inductive proximity sensor. This. Bro. 
This had so many views, but it's getting technical, bro. This is one of... Not that technical. Some some videos we've seen, it gets super, super technical, bro. Okay. Like Linus occasionally will as well, man. These that's been deconstructed by Williams so that it'll fit inside his sneaky device. The way it works is when you supply power on these two wires, an oscillating current passes through the coil inside, which induces an oscillating magnetic field. You might know that a changing magnetic field induces a current in nearby metals. Well, an I don't. Oscillating magnetic. Uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> Still super technical. The field is changing all the time. So when the steel ball approaches, an oscillating current is induced inside it. Now that oscillating electric current inside the ball has an oscillating magnetic field of its own. And the way the physics works out, that induces... Bro, it feels like a college professor, man. Feels like he's my college professor, man. This magnetic field actually opposes the magnetic field of the coil. So and I I I've never even been to college, bros. So as the ball approaches, the total magnetic field goes down. That's detected by the sensor and this little LED lights up. But for the purposes of this circuit, it also sends a signal voltage down this third wire. So now Guys, I, I, I was just hoping you could show off more and more perpetual motion devices, because that looks cool to look at. Though. Now we can have the electromagnet turn on when the ball gets to a certain position. We can then decide, like, how long do we want the magnet to be turned on for? I've attached a voltmeter across the electromagnet so you can see a voltage is supplied to the electromagnet for about 10 milliseconds. Final couple of things I want to look at. What are these things? Well, these are capacitors. You really need to give that electromagnet. Dude, I, I totally thought they were like batteries, man. I'm so silly. Some juice. I'd be seeing like those like miniature ones of those maybe. Maybe, maybe they're not even that what I think they are, bro, but... So instead of powering it directly from the battery, you charge up these capacitors and then power it from them. I'm not sure how long it takes to charge up these capacitors, but if you send two balls down at the same time, the second ball doesn't make it. But if you leave a little gap between the two, then they both come back to the top. And actually, looking at the voltage graph from earlier, the capacitors don't discharge very much at all, so... You can imagine it wouldn't take much time to get them back where you want them before the next ball arrives. All right, all right, good, good. These two blue components are important. They allow you to adjust a couple of the parameters of the device. You tweak the top one if you want to adjust the strength of the electromagnet. Yeah, for real? And you tweak the bottom one. Yeah, but who's gonna? If you want to adjust how long the electromagnet there should be buttons on the side to tweak the, 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 the settings like this, right guys? The magnet is on for. And these are important because each one of these devices is handmade. There's going to be a slight variation in the distance between the rails and the sensor, the length of the track and so on. So you need to be able to fine tune these things after it's all put together. I mean, you don't have to. <laughs> guys, I, I want to see him put like 10, 10 of the marbles on there bro what would happen if you put 10 of them would we, or maybe just three is the most william does it before he sends it the final thing is the power button you know you really don't want your perpetual motion machine to have a power button it kind of spoils the illusion a little bit so here under the acrylic you can see a capacitive sensor when you touch it you're adding the capacitance of your body to that little bit of acrylic there that sensor can detect the change in capacitance and the circuitry interprets that as a button press and so in the wooden version, it's as if there is no power button. On the subjects of perpetual motion, actually, occasionally I'll make a video that dem Snap, you can just touch it. Some touch right there and modify it. No, that's pretty cool. Physical principle, typically involving magnets. And there'll be a discussion in the comments of like... Freaking magnets, how they work, right guys? Anyone remember that? Would it be possible to slightly adjust the setup so that the thing keeps spinning forever or the thing keeps bouncing up and down forever things like that a good example is my video about the spinning ballerina toy what if you had two magnets or a ring of magnets so that the ballerina just constantly moved round in a circle but actually you'll notice in that video i'm always moving my hand the magnet is always getting closer and closer to the ballerina and the ballerina is getting further and further away and of course the ballerina is pushing back yeah, you made a point in the comments about how perpetual motion devices are just impossible. Which kind of makes sense, uh, philosophically.
Right, guys. Back against my hand, so I'm doing work. My hand is moving some distance in the direction of an applied force. So there's no free energy to be had here. And of course, the bro has a skirt there's on. There's no free energy here either, unless you don't pay for your electricity. And oh, I thought it was battery power. Thankfully, through the magic of buying two of them. And th Dude, I legit thought it was the end of the video, bro. What is this? Hopefully, through the magic of buying two of them, I already have a taken apart one right here. I picked up the wrong one. Wait, I think this is legit some bloopers, guys. I used to get these phone calls where they'd be like, Hello, am I speaking to Stephen Mould of such and such address? Yes, that's me. That's my address. And they say, I'm calling from insurance department okay they know my details they must be calling from the insurance department of my insurers but then you carry on the conversation it turns out they're just trying to sell you life insurance or something like that it's really interesting to know how these annoying practices came about it's also interesting to know how you can stop this kind of no, it's an ad guys cool and it's an ad it has to be into your yeah, we got. I just realized the hashtag ad, man. Life thanks to the sponsor of this video, Incogni. Basically, it comes down to these intermediary companies called data brokers. There's hundreds of them. Bro, I got email. I got an email, and they had my info already, bro. They knew my phone number, everything, bro. And they're sending me spam emails. I couldn't even unsubscribe, man. It's kind of sad. I blocked their email, man. Looks like to my info, man and they all collect data about you and then sell that data to companies like insurance department and then those people call you send you emails send you mail in the post you can contact these data brokers and tell them to stop but they want to be contacted in a specific way maybe it's an email maybe it's a web form and it has to include specific information and there's hundreds of them it's almost impossible for one person yeah, shaking my head, bro. ...to do it on their own. So wouldn't it be great if there existed a company that did all the legwork in advance, figuring out how all these companies want to be contacted, and then automated it, so that you could contact that company and say, can you do that thing that you do? And that's how Incogni works. You sign up, you give them permission to act on your behalf, and then they contact all of these companies. And it just happens in the background. If That'd be cool. If you want, you can... But you know how fan of is, bro. You can log in and you can see the progress. Look, these are all the companies that no longer have my data. And it feels good. Like, I don't get those creepy phone calls anymore. Daily Motion be collecting data as well, man. What? And I don't get the kind of spam that seems weirdly specific to me and my data. If you're interested in the service, the promo on this... Daily Motion of all places, man. Is that what they're doing now? Because I never see Daily Motion pop up on my feed that much. This one's really good. The first 100 people to go to incogni.com forward slash science and use promo code science at checkout will get 60% off. The link is also in the description, so check out Incogni today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit subscribe. And the algorithm thinks you'll enjoy this video next. Uh, all right, guys. Careful, you s or you'll s have too many small kitchen appliances. I don't get it. Last so hard. Thankfully, the, the magic of buying two of them. <laughs> All right, guys, like, comment, subscribe, check out the original video. The algorithm thinks that you'll like this video. Uh, that video. Some, some, that video. The algorithm will think you like that video. Peace out, everyone. Pretty cool video.